What's good? We back with the boxing clinic and more. One time for the one time. Y'all know what the business is. We grinding. Uh, back, Hood Stories, episode four. Early Monday morning. Switch it up. You know, we talk about the real 50 Cent. All right. It's a documentary on YouTube. You can check it out. But, um, you know, we talking about 50 Cent. And they was talking about the real 50 Cent in the comment section about a month ago. And people didn't know who he was. So, um, you know, born in the Bronx. You know, um. Really, nobody know how he got the name 50 Cent. Some people say it's because it's high. Some people say he robbed the dice game, ended with 50 Cent, left with 500, um, you know, because he robbed people quick. Not sure about it. I know Eric B., Eric B. and Rakim was on the documentary as he knew him. And, you know, he was a robber, a jack boy, like a certified robber, ready to go and rob anybody, even given time. Rappers got robbed by him. Um, anybody in the streets got robbed by him and um you know uh he was short very very short and he was just a menace um he was a menace you know what i'm saying and you know 50 cent stole his name and um you know uh ran with it as a rapper um he opened about about uh you know using his name and you know he says basically like he's carrying on the legacy whatever making it popular but um, his real name was Calvin D. Martin, and born in the Bronx, died in Brooklyn. Um, at the age of 23, died, died very, very young. Um, just continued to rob, 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 rob people until, you know, um, you know, it caught up with him. You know, drug dealers, um, you know, anybody, rappers. Like I said, he was standing outside. Of, Eric B. said they would be having parties, and 50 Cent would be standing right outside of Paul. Like, nobody knew it was him. He was like, man, come on, man, this... Come on, man. Let, I mean, let's just have a good time tonight, man. No need to be robbing people and stuff of that nature. And, you know, and that's what it was about. I mean, he went to one of the malls. Can't remember what you, I think it was the malls in the Bronx. And, um, you know, got into it with a kid, you know, and, um, you know, thought it was his brother or whatever. And they shot each other. He went to the hospital. Then I think after that, he fled to go to the Army. His Army found out about his reputation, I think. Um, they kicked him out, but he came back more deadlier with more skills on weaponry and, and you know, how to survival tactics. Um, and he came back even more hungrier, you know what I'm saying? Even way more hungrier. And, um, you know, his baby mama and his family, his closest friends say he wasn't, the, he wasn't like really a bad guy. He kind of separated the streets from, he separated the streets from, from family. He would make sure everybody was good. Uh, but then he would just go out there and, and do what he did, you know what I'm saying? He also was seen riding with the print with Supreme and them, the Supreme team. You know, he was on, I think he was in the Eric B. Rakim one of their videos. You know, he would be on the back of their album covers with gold medallions and stuff like that, what they wore back in the day. And um, but he was just known for robbing any and everybody. And eventually, he caught up with caught up with him. Uh, somebody caught him in the projects. Um, I think it was in Brooklyn. Um, you know, he was hiding out there. He knew they was trying to kill him. That's why he fled to, to, to the army before because a lot of people was trying to kill him for robbing him. Went up to, went into the one of the project buildings, I forget the name of it. And um, you know, they hired somebody to kill him. I think they threatened the guy. They killed the guy's family or or if he didn't kill fifty cent, it was gonna be an issue. You know, they was gonna kill his family, whatever it may be. And he went in there, he knew where he was at. I think it was like his best friend or one of his friends told on him or someone's closest confidant, you know, told where he was at. My man's went in there, um, you know, shot him in the stairwell. Four days later, he died in uh, 1987 at the age of 23. And, um, you know, he was really, really about that. He was suited up, boot up, and, and really go rob people from what you hear. You know, from numerous people. He would really go get it. And 50 Cent, you know, played off that role. And some of his closest people didn't like that. You know, one of his best friends, she didn't like that. You know, she didn't, she didn't like that. She didn't like how he was still off his name playing off his name, and that's what a lot of rappers do, you know what I'm saying, Rick Ross, the real freeway Rick Ross, you know, he played off his name, a lot of rappers, you know, act gangster, but really ain't gangster, but 50 Cent actually has a rap sheet, but, um, so it ain't, it ain't the, the Rick Ross situation where he was a correctional officer, and, um, he was acting like he was moving all this weight, like freeway Rick Ross, and when freeway Rick Ross got out, he said, no, nah, bro, you're not gonna play me like that, you know what I'm saying, you're not gonna play off my name, and, um, you know, at least 50 Cent had some type of rap sheet, the rapper. But um, this dude was was a certified goon. I put the documentary link into the description um, so you can get the full gist of, you know, everything. You know, how he teamed up with Prem and them, and he was with them for a minute. 
you know, how his relationship with Eric B from Eric B and Rakim and, and a lot of people that knew him, man. You got store owners that say he we would have a blocks as ghost town. This was a little dude, like five, 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 six, that had, you know, grown men afraid of him. You know what I'm saying? You know, he had drug dealers afraid of him, you know. He he would just pull up and just clear streets out, man. A dude that's five five with with two big old revolver guns and, and going crazy. And back then, you know, it was a wild, wild, it was a wild, wild east out there, man. You know, people talking about it's bad today. Man, imagine the crack era, you know, the cocaine, the heroin era. It was very, very bad. You know, it's always been bad out here. And they like, I can't believe what's going on. Social media just exposes more of what's going on. It's more of a connection. It's more of a communication of what's going on through social media. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, but back then it was bad. Excuse me. <clears throat> it was real, real bad. And this, this dude was going around ponying down on any and everybody, man. And 50 Cent, you know, he played off his name. And, you know, some people, you know, didn't like it. Some people was all right with it. They felt like he was carrying his name on. And 50 ain't, you know, 50 ain't the worst guy. You know what I'm saying? He ain't the best guy to carry on the name. But he ain't out here completely perpetrating and faking, even though he's known as a as a snitch. And he took 50 Cent name and he allegedly snitched on Preem and put Preem in jail. But that's a totally different story. But y'all know what the business is. The Boston Clinic and more hood stories episode four we got a playlist we got the other four hood stories and other and other videos we talk about because we talk more than boxing i want you guys to know that one time for the one time link the documentary in the description uh remember we're on facebook instagram twitter the raw and uncut podcast all those links in the description if you're in the college sports football basketball s 10 college sports most wanted is there for your needs as well all those links in the description if you want to donate the paypal link is there as well much blessings to the whole ldbc and everybody that's working in between. One time for the one time. Share, subscribe, hit the bell icon.